David Rolf Graeber, born the 12th of February 1961, is an American anthropologist and anarchist activist, perhaps best known for his 2011 volume Debt: The First 5000 Years. He is professor of anthropology at the London School of Economics as an assistant professor and associate professor of anthropology at Yale from 1998 to 2007. He specialized in theories of value and social theory. The university's decision not to rehire him when he would otherwise have become eligible for tenure sparked an academic controversy. He went on to become, from 2007 to 13, reader in social anthropology at Goldsmiths, University of London. His activism includes protests against the Third Summit of the Americas in Quebec City in 2001, and the 2002 World Economic Forum in New York City. Graeber was a leading figure in the Occupy Wall Street movement, and is sometimes credited with having coined the slogan, We are the 99%. Topic early life Graeber's parents, who were in their 40s when Graeber was born, were self taught working class intellectuals in New York. Graeber's mother, Ruth Rubinstein, had been a garment worker, and played the lead role in the 1930s musical comedy review Pins and Needles, staged by the International Ladies' Garment Workers' Union. Graeber's father Kenneth, who was affiliated with the Youth Communist League in college, though he quit well before the Hitler-Stalin Pact, participated in the Spanish Revolution in Barcelona and fought in the Spanish Civil War. He later worked as a plate stripper on offset printers. Graeber grew up in New York, in a cooperative apartment building described by Business Week magazine as suffused with radical politics. Graeber has been an anarchist since the age of 16, according to an interview he gave to the Village Voice in 2005. Graeber graduated from Phillips Academy Andover in 1978 and received his BA from the State University of New York at Purchase in 1984. He received his master's degree and doctorate at the University of Chicago, where he won a Fulbright Fellowship to conduct 20 months of ethnographic field research in Betafo, Madagascar, beginning in 1989. His resulting Ph.D. thesis on magic, slavery, and politics was supervised by Marshall Salins and entitled The Disastrous Ordeal of 1987, Memory and Violence in Rural Madagascar. Topic. Academic history In 1998, two years after completing his PhD, Graeber became assistant professor at Yale University, then became associate professor. In May 2005, the Yale Anthropology Department decided not to renew Graeber's contract, preventing consideration for tenure which was scheduled for 2008. Pointing to Graeber's anthropological scholarship, his supporters including fellow anthropologists, former students and activists claimed that the decision was politically motivated. More than 4,500 people signed petitions supporting him, and anthropologists such as Marshall Salins, Laura Nader, Michael Tausig, and Maurice Bloch called for Yale to rescind its decision. Bloch, who had been a professor of anthropology at the London School of Economics and the Collège de France, and writer on Madagascar, made the following statement about Graeber in a letter to the university. His writings on anthropological theory are outstanding. I consider him the best anthropological theorist of his generation from anywhere in the world. The Yale administration argued that Graeber's dismissal was in keeping with Yale's policy of granting tenure to few junior faculty thus generating the widespread false impression that this was, in fact, a tenure case and gave no formal explanation for its actions. Graeber has suggested that the university's decision might have been influenced by his support of a student of his who was targeted for expulsion because of her membership in GESO, Yale's Graduate Student Union. In December 2005, Graeber agreed to leave the university after a one year paid sabbatical. That spring, he taught two final classes Introduction to Cultural Anthropology, attended by over 200 students, and a seminar entitled Direct Action and Radical Social Theory. On the 25th of May 2006, Graeber was invited to give the Malinowski Lecture at the London School of Economics. Each year, the Anthropology Department at the university asks an anthropologist at a relatively early stage of their career to give the Malinowski Lecture, and only invites those who are considered to have made a significant contribution to anthropological theory. Graeber's address was entitled 
Beyond Power, Knowledge, an Exploration of the Relation of Power, Ignorance and Stupidity. This lecture has since been edited into an essay, titled, Dead Zones of the Imagination, on Violence, Bureaucracy and Interpretive Labor. That same year, Graeber was asked to present the keynote address in the 100th anniversary Diamond Jubilee meetings of the Association of Social Anthropologists. In April 2011, he presented the Anthropology Department's annual Distinguished Lecture at Berkeley, and in May 2012 delivered the second annual Marilyn Strathan Lecture at Cambridge the first was delivered by Marilyn Strathan. From 2008 through spring 2013, Graeber was a lecturer and a reader at Goldsmiths College of the University of London. In 2013, he accepted a professorship at the London School of Economics. Topic. Scholarship Graeber is the author of Fragments of an Anarchist Anthropology and Towards an Anthropological Theory of Value, The False Coin of Our Own Dreams. He has done extensive anthropological work in Madagascar, writing his doctoral thesis The Disastrous Ordeal of 1987, Memory and Violence in Rural Madagascar on the continuing social division between the descendants of nobles and the descendants of former slaves. A book based on his dissertation, Lost People, Magic and the Legacy of Slavery in Madagascar, appeared from Indiana University Press in September 2007. A book of collected essays, Possibilities, Essays on Hierarchy, Rebellion, and Desire was published by AK Press in November 2007 and Direct Action, an ethnography appeared from the same press in August 2009, as well as a collection of essays co-edited with Stephen Shukaitis called Constituent Imagination, Militant Investigations, Collective Theorization AK Press, May 2007. These were followed by a major historical monograph, Debt the First 5,000 Years Melville House, which appeared in July 2011. Speaking about debt with the Brooklyn Rail, Graeber remarked, The IMF International Monetary Fund and what they did to countries in the Global South, which is, of course, exactly the same thing bankers are starting to do at home now, is just a modern version of this old story. That is, creditors and government saying you're having a financial crisis, you owe money, obviously you must pay your debts. There's no question of forgiving debts. Therefore, people are going to have to stop eating so much. The money has to be extracted from the most vulnerable members of society. Lives are destroyed, millions of people die. People would never dream of supporting such a policy until you say, well, they have to pay their debts. In December 2017, Graeber and his former teacher Marshall Salins released a collection of essays entitled, On Kings, outlining a theory, inspired by A. M. Hocart, of the origins of human sovereignty in cosmological ritual. Graeber contributed essays on the Schillich and Marina kingdoms, and a final essay that explored what he called, The Constitutive War Between King and People. He is currently working on an historical work on the origins of social inequality with University College London archaeologist David Wengro. From January 2013 until June 2016, Graeber was a contributing editor at the Baffler magazine in Cambridge, Massachusetts. From 2011 until 2017 he was editor-at-large of the open access journal How, the Journal of Ethnographic Theory, for which he and Giovanni da Colco wrote the founding theoretical statement and manifesto of the School of Ethnographic Theory. Topic bureaucracy, managerialism, and bullshit jobs Much of Graeber's recent scholarship has focused on the topic of bullshit jobs, proliferated by administrative bloat and what Graeber calls managerial feudalism. One of the points he raises in his 2013 book The Democracy Project, on the Occupy movement, is the increase in what he calls bullshit jobs, referring to forms of employment that even those holding the jobs feel should not or do not need to exist. He sees such jobs as being typically concentrated in professional, managerial, clerical, sales, and service workers. As he explained also in an article in Strike, magazine, in the year 1930, John Maynard Keynes predicted that, by century's end, technology would have advanced sufficiently that countries like Great Britain or the United States would have achieved a 15-hour work week. There's every reason to believe he was right. In technological terms, we are quite capable of this. And yet it didn't happen. 
Instead, technology has been marshaled, if anything, to figure out ways to make us all work more. In order to achieve this, jobs have had to be created that are, effectively, pointless. Huge swathes of people, in Europe and North America in particular, spend their entire working lives performing tasks they secretly believe do not really need to be performed. The moral and spiritual damage that comes from this situation is profound. It is a scar across our collective soul. Yet virtually no one talks about it. After the great success of the article, Graeber wrote the book Bullshit Jobs, a theory, published in 2018 by Simon and Schuster. Topic: <laughs> Activism. In addition to his academic work, Graeber has a history of both direct and indirect involvement in political activism, including membership in the Labor Union Industrial Workers of the World, a role in protests against the World Economic Forum in New York City in 2002, support for the 2010 UK student protests, and an early role in the Occupy Wall Street movement. He is co-founder of the Anti-Capitalist Convergence. In November 2011, Rolling Stone magazine credited Graeber with giving the Occupy Wall Street movement its theme, "We are the 99%." Though Graeber has written in the Democracy Project that the slogan was a collective creation, Rolling Stone says Graeber helped create the first New York City General Assembly with only 60 participants on August 2. He spent the next six weeks involved with the burgeoning movement, including facilitating general assemblies, attending working group meetings, and organizing legal and medical training and classes on nonviolent resistance. A few days after the encampment of Zuccotti Park began, he left New York for Austin, Texas. Graeber has argued that the Occupy Wall Street movement's lack of recognition of the legitimacy of either existing political institutions or the legal structure, its embrace of non hierarchical consensus decision making, and of prefigurative politics make it a fundamentally anarchist project. Comparing it to the Arab Spring, Graeber has claimed that Occupy Wall Street and other contemporary grassroots protests represent the opening salvo in a wave of negotiations over the dissolution of the American Empire." Writing in Al Jazeera he has noted that from the beginning the Occupy movement was about a "...commitment to answer only to a moral order, not a legal one," and so held meetings without the requisite permits. Defending this early decision of the Occupy movement he has said that, "...as the public, we should not need permission to occupy public space." Graeber tweeted in 2014 that he had been evicted from his family's home of over 50 years due to his involvement with Occupy Wall Street. He added that others associated with Occupy had received similar administrative harassment. Topic: <laughs> Publications. Topic: Books 2001 Toward an Anthropological Theory of Value, The False Coin of Our Own Dreams. New York, Palgrave. ISBN 978-0-312-24044-8. 2004. Fragments of an Anarchist Anthropology. Chicago, Prickly Paradigm Press distributed by University of Chicago Press. ISBN 978-0-9728196-4-0. 2007. Lost People, Magic and the Legacy of Slavery in Madagascar. Bloomington, Indiana University Press. ISBN 978-0-253-34910-1. Possibilities, Essays on Hierarchy, Rebellion, and Desire. Oakland, California, AK Press. ISBN 978-1-904859-66-6. 2009. Direct Action, An Ethnography. Edinburgh Oakland, AK Press. ISBN 978-1-904859-79-6. 2011. Debt The First Five Thousand Years. Brooklyn, NY, Melville House. ISBN 978-1-933633-86-2. 2011. Revolutions in Reverse, Essays on Politics, Violence, Art, and Imagination. London, New York, Minor Compositions, Autonomedia. ISBN 978-1-57027-243-1. 
2013. The Democracy Project, A History, A Crisis, A Movement. New York, Spiegel and Grau. ISBN 9780812993375. Topic: Nineteen Ninety One. Twenty Fifteen. The Utopia of Rules on Technology, Stupidity, and the Secret Joys of Bureaucracy. Melville House. ISBN 9781612193755. With Salins, Marshall. Twenty Seventeen. On Kings. How Books. ISBN 978-0-9861325-0-6. 2018. Bullshit Jobs, A Theory. Penguin. ISBN 978-0241263884, as co-editor Greiber, David 2007. Constituent Imagination, Militant Investigations, Collective Theorization. Oakland, California, AK Press. ISBN 978-1-904859-352. OCLC 141,193,537. Articles Academic March 2006. Turning Modes of Production Inside Out, or, Why Capitalism is a Transformation of Slavery. PDF. Critique of Anthropology. 26 1, 61-85. DOI, 10.1177-0308275 extension 06061484. Retrieved February 15, 2012. September 2011. The Divine Kinghip of the Shilluk, On Violence, Utopia, and the Human Condition, or, Elements for an Archaeology of Sovereignty. How, The Journal of Ethnographic Theory. Retrieved April 16, 2013. December 2012. Dead Zones of the Imagination, On Violence, Bureaucracy, and Interpretive Labor. The 2006 Malinowski Memorial Lecture. How, The Journal of Ethnographic Theory. Retrieved January 21, 2013. <laughs> General December 27, 1998. Rebel Without a God. In These Times. Retrieved February 15, 2012. A Meditation on the Anti-Authoritarian Elements of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. August 21, 2000. Give it away. In these times. 24, 19. Retrieved February 15, 2012. An article about the French intellectual Marcel Mauss. January to February 2002. The New Anarchists. New Left Review. New Left Review. 2, 13. June 1, 2003. The Twilight of Vanguardism. Indie Media DC. Archived from the original on January 12, 2013. Retrieved February 15, 2012. An essay originally delivered as a keynote address during the History Matters, Social Movements Past, Present, and Future conference at the New School for Social Research on May 3, 2003. January 6, 2004. Anarchism in the 21st Century. Z Magazine. Archived from the original on March 17, 2008. Retrieved February 15, 2011. Co-authored with André Grabasic. December 6, 2005. On the Phenomenology of Giant Puppets, Broken Windows, Imaginary Jars of Urine, and the Cosmological Role of the Police in American Culture. PDF. Retrieved February 15, 2012. Originally an address to anthropology, art and activism seminar series at Brown University's Watson Institute, December 6, 2005 January 2007. Army of Altruists. Harper's. Retrieved February 15, 2012. An attempt to solve the riddle of why so many working-class Americans vote right-wing. October 12, 2007. The Shock of Victory. Infoshop News. Archived from the original on February 14, 2012. 
retrieved February 15, 2012. October 16, 2007. Revolution in Reverse. InfoShop News. Archived from the original on October 17, 2011. Retrieved February 15, 2012. April 1, 2008. The Sadness of Post Workerism, or Art and Immaterial Labor. Conference, a sort of review. PDF. The Commoner. Retrieved February 15, 2012. An assessment of recent trendy autonomous theory a la Negri, Lazzarato, etc., with some comments on the relation of art, value, scams, and the fate of the future. November 17, 2008. Hope in Common. Autonomedia.org. Archived from the original on February 10, 2009. Retrieved February 15, 2012. February 10, 2009. Debt, the first 5,000 years. Mute Magazine. 2 12. Retrieved February 15, 2012. November 2010. Against Kamikaze Capitalism, Oil, Climate Change and the French Refinery Blockades. Shift. Retrieved February 15, 2012. January 1, 2011. The Divine Kingship of the Schillich, On Violence, Utopia, and the Human Condition, or, Elements for an Archaeology of Sovereignty. How, 1, 1. Retrieved May 9, 2017. December 7, 2010. To have is to owe. Triple Canopy, 10. Retrieved February 15, 2012. An illustrated essay on the history of debt, containing excerpts from Debt, The First 5,000 Years, 2011. September 25, 2011. Occupy Wall Street rediscovers the radical imagination. Guardian.co.uk. Retrieved January 18, 2013. March 2012. A Flying Cars and the Declining Rate of Profit. The Baffler. Retrieved January 7, 2013. April 2013. A Practical Utopian's Guide to the Coming Collapse. The Baffler. Retrieved February 15, 2014. May 2013. It is value that brings universes into being. How? 3 2. Retrieved May 9, 2017. August 2013. On the phenomenon of bullshit jobs. Strike. Magazine. Retrieved August 19, 2013. February 2014. What's the point if we can't have fun? The Baffler. Retrieved February 15, 2014. March 26, 2014. Caring too much. That's the curse of the working classes. The Guardian. Retrieved April 12, 2014. May 30, 2014. Savage capitalism is back, and it will not tame itself. The Guardian. Retrieved May 31, 2014. March 2, 2018. How to change the course of human history. Eurozine.com. Retrieved April 29, 2018. Co-authored with David Wengrow.